In today's quick video, I'll share a couple of tips just to help you uh, structure your teams correctly when it comes to using um, Planner and OneNote, of course. Multiple ways of doing that, and uh, many of these are my opinions, I have to add. But uh, let's see if uh, I can get you to agree with me. Now, when a team is created, I think it's important to remember that when a team is created, it created a Microsoft 365 group in the background. So if your team is called um, Plant Process, then there will be an, a Microsoft 365 group called Plant Process. And um, there's a couple of other resources it also creates automatically, including your shared mailbox, the calendar, and then of course um, that Microsoft 365 group is like your security group for the permissions and things. And there's also a OneNote that is created um, with your team. Now, um, this does cause a lot of confusion when people then set up their teams and they want to add the OneNotes to their teams, etc. So if I'm on a team, normally I just have one plan or planner and one OneNote to the team. I don't often see the point of having multiple plans or multiple um, OneNotes as it's one group of people already working together. But again, you might have a different business case. But if I'm on a team, normally on the general channel, I will go and add the planner as well as um, the OneNote. Now, important to take note, <laughs> take note, pun intended, is that when I add the OneNote, Preferably don't create a new notebook unless that is what you want to achieve. You need to add the default one that's already created because otherwise you're creating a duplicate OneNote and that's not the same as the one that's added on the SharePoint site behind your team. So when you add the OneNote, preferably add the one that's already created on the team. Okay, so I'm going to just go and create or add that OneNote that's pre-created to my team. Because also to take note of is if I open the SharePoint site behind this uh, Microsoft Teams, so I'm going to go to open in SharePoint and um, I just want to move this across and you'll see that on the SharePoint site, so there's process plant, this is the SharePoint site collection behind my Microsoft team, you'll see that there's notebook. Now, that is your OneNote that is created behind your team. And if you don't select and add the existing OneNote, then this OneNote on your site and the one that you add on your team will be two different OneNote notebooks. Okay, so that's important to take note of. And then normally I just rename it. So just to keep the tab shorter, I would go rename it to OneNote. If you have to create additional OneNotes, don't call it OneNote because in the background there's going to be gazillions of OneNotes called OneNote. Always call it the same as your team or something similar to your team, like Process Plant OneNote Notebook 2 or something, and then add that OneNote. So when I've added the OneNote um, in this example, it then adds the whole OneNote notebook. So there you can see the sections and the pages are still blank. And just in case you want to do this, you can go to a specific channel add the OneNote again if you wanted to. So I can go and say I want to add OneNote. And the nice thing is, is that if I expand this OneNote, the default, I can then say I want to create a new section on this channel. So that would be administration, just as an example, which means that on the channels you can open up sections of the same OneNote that's added to your team. I personally prefer just adding it on the general channel. I don't um, add it like everywhere because I don't see the point of it because you can have multiple sections and multiple pages. So one OneNote notebook per team is more than enough for me. So there you'll see I've added administration. Again, I normally just rename it so that people know what it is that we're looking at. So if I rename OneNote and I then open up the OneNote here, let's just um, expand that area. So there you can see I'm on the administration section. Now let's talk about adding planner. Now that's where it gets tricky and this definitely changed from the beginning when um, Teams got rolled out because in the beginning um, you could add the existing planner okay and now the plan is actually not pre-created so if I had to go and it's called now tasks by planner and um, to do if I had to go and create a new planner here and the mistake that everyone makes is to just call it tasks or planner which means again there's gazillions of plans in the background called planner in the company, okay? So don't create a new plan here, because if I create a new plan here, it actually creates a new Microsoft 365 group linked to this plan, separate from your team. So what I would suggest is to rather go to planner in office.com, go to new plan, 
Then what is my team called? Let me quickly just check that again. Process plant. Then yeah, you can see. So let me just cancel that. I'm going to go new plan. And I'm going to call this process plant. And I'm going to say add to an existing Microsoft 365 group so that I don't create another Microsoft 365 group. Look at the front end for you, maybe as not an admin, it might not be a big issue. But believe me, in the back end, look, it's really becoming a little bit crazy. So I'm going to say add to existing Microsoft 365 group. And then I'm going to just scroll through and find the group that I want to assign it to. So there we go. There's my process plant group that was created when this team was created. Because I want that planner to be add it to that same group which is also my permissions for that plan okay so process plant and I'm going to create the plan which means that if I now go um, back to my team and I add it as a tab I can select that plan so there's tasks by planner I'm not going to create a new one I'm actually going to say use existing and voila there we go there I have it linked to the same existing Office 365 group or Microsoft 365 group that's in the background. And again, I normally just rename them. So you can rename it to Planner or to Tasks or whatever you'd like to do, okay? So please uh, know that you can go and create a plan in the portal and then link it to the group that's already assigned to this team. That just really minimizes the like footprint of this environment that you work in. I've added the existing OneNote to my Microsoft team, not a new one, because that's just creating extra stuff for the sake of creating them. And then I went and created a planner but linked it to an existing Microsoft 365 group. So I do hope that that's uh, helped you a bit to kind of clean up your structures and for teams and then of course as well for any admins that might be watching this. Um, maybe just take a note of that if you do provision teams as well for and on behalf of employees that you rather do this correctly. Have a great day and enjoy.